If you are looking to buy an automatic dress watch but at a very limited budget, say $300, are you stuck with the micro brand or Japanese models? Of course not. There are actually plenty of Swiss choices out there, and the watch we are going to look at today is one of them. This is the second Iskemen. I'm Jeremy. Today, let's take a look at this dress watch from Certina, the DS Podium. I'm going to quickly talk about the brand itself, the Certina. It's a Swiss watch company founded in the 19th century. While I don't have any experience with their models before, I don't know the good and bad of their watches, but according to my observation on the gray market or some secondary market, there's something very interesting about their prices. Their models are often being sold at well below the sticker price. So a lot of times you can get a certain watch for uh, much cheaper than some other entry-level Swiss models or uh, Japanese models like Seiko. I know all of the watches have discounts on the gray market, but the discount on Certina is just huge. The price, the, the sticker price of this one, I believe was 695 US dollars, but I got it for less than 300, to be exact, 295 dollars before tax. Alright, let's dive into the watch itself. First of all, let's take a look at the dimensions, because the wearability is very important to a dress watch. Let's measure it from 10 o'clock to 4 o'clock. And as we can see, the diameter of the case is 37.9, millimeters. And the case thickness is 10.8 millimeters, under 11. And let's see another very important number, the lock to lug. Because a lot of times, uh, it's not only the case diameter that affects how it wears on the, on the wrist, but the lock to lug is even more important. And as we can see, it's 45.6 millimeters uh, under 46. So it should be very comfortable when you put it on your wrist, uh, very wearable. All right, let's look at the dial design. Oh, well, before that, I want to mention the highlight of this watch, and that is the movement. This Certina uses a ETA 2024. Uh, it's probably the regular grade, and I know it's nothing fancy, but don't forget the price point of this watch. And once taking the price into consideration, uh, it's not hard to understand why I'm so excited about this watch. So a lot of times, this watch, uh, and a lot of Certina watches are compared to Tissot, and uh, most of the Tissot watches use the Paramatic 80 movement. And that movement, the Paramatic 80, is actually a modification of the ETA 2024. They increase the power reserve by reducing the frequency. So instead of 40 hours, you get 80 hours of power reserve. But since they reduce the frequency from 4 Hz to 3 Hz, the movement of the hand, the movement of the second hand in the Paramatic 80, is not as smooth as that in the 2024. I would not say one is better than the other, it's just a more uh, personal preference. Alright, let's get back onto this watch. And its dial, the white dial, is another reason I bought this watch. Uh, to be honest, the finish of the dial itself does not feel expensive or superior in any way, because after all, it's not a expensive watch, it's just a very entry level watch. But I do like the design of this watch. It's somewhat interesting. And first of all, the dial is not a flat one. It has some dimensions, it has some depths. Uh, we can see the outer ring here is lifted. This design adds depth to the dial. And there are these circular strips carved into this part making it more interesting to look at. Let's move the hand away. So 
So above the 6 o'clock is the date window. The edges of the date window are refined. And the date print is uh, pretty crisp. The indices are applied. At 12, 3, 9 o'clock is Arabic numbers. And other positions are baton shaped. And what's interesting about these indices is that their edges are hard and sharp, thus enhancing the dimensional look of the dial. And there is this chapter ring with minted markers on it, taking the depth of the dial to another level. About the color of the dial, it's not pure white. Uh, it has that kind of warm glow. So I think it's more accurate to describe it as pearl white. And then let's look at the hands. The hour and the minute hand are polished. Uh, well, actually I'm not sure if they polished or not, but their surface is finished in highlight. And of course they are filled with lube. Uh, it should be super luminova. I'm not sure about the specific type though. I just know it's super luminous. And the second hand is totally blacked out, but also in the polished uh, highlight finish. So under 12 o'clock is the brand name Certina and the year they are founded, which is 1888. And above six is the name of the model, the DS Podium Automatic. And then the date we know, which we've already talked about. And of course, the printed SwiftMate. And the UPC or SKU number of this particular model is on the screen. Uh, I'll also put it in the description because there are just so many uh, DS Podium variants. All right, let's take a loom shot. So the loom is this kind of uh, bluish color instead of the greenish color. So my guess about the loom material is a uh, BGW knife. And the crystal is sapphire and has AR coating on both sides. Oh, and by the way, since the edge of the hand are polished, it's not likely it will lose a hand at a glance. And then let's look at the case design. Uh, we just measured the thickness and it's well below 12 millimeters. But when you actually put this one in your wrist, it feels bulkier and thicker. And one of the reasons I get is because the shape of the case, uh, the shape of the profile, as you can see, uh, the sidewall of the profile is uh, straight cut from top to bottom. And this will make the case wear larger and thicker than its actual number suggests. And again, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. It comes to personal preference in the end. Uh, after all, the 12mm is nowhere near the thickness that will make you uncomfortable. Uh, the surface of the case is polished throughout and that suits the definition of a dress watch but with the polished surface it is a fingerprint magnetic and no surprise here and it's very prone to scratches the crown is polished as well and signed with the ds logo and there is this round shaped crown bridge i personally really like the shape of the bridge as it integrates with the crown and the case really well. But there's also a shortcoming with this kind of bridge. The crown itself is extremely hard to get a grip of when you want to wind it. My finger hurts after a few rounds of winding. And talking about the crown, it is not screwed in, it is push and pull. While a lot of people may uh, not like that, but I think it's okay for a dress watch. 
because you don't need a lot of water resistance anyway. I want to talk about the winding and changing date of an automatic watch real quick. A lot of watch companies suggest not to change the state between 8pm and 4am because that will potentially damage the movement. Well, uh, some people have done it without any adverse effects, but personally I don't want to take the risk. Flip the watch and you'll see a see-through case back. I'm not sure if it's sapphire or just a mineral glass. And to be honest, the regular grade ETA 2824 has nothing special to look at. But again, considering the price point of this watch, I think it is very generous of Sartina to put a see-through case back here. The rotor is signed with the name of the brand and the year it founded, Sartina 1888. And we can see it has a water resistance of 100 meter, 330 feet, which I think is more than acceptable for a dress watch. And let's take a look at the case profile again. What I want to point out is the shape of the lux here. As we can see, the lux slopes down, and considering the lux to lux is already under 46 millimeters, so this one should be extremely comfortable to wear on the wrist. And let's put it on and see how it wears on my uh, 6.7 inch wrist. I think we forgot to measure the lock width. Let's measure it now. And as we can see, the lock width is 18, uh, I mean 19 millimeters. And that is not what I want to see in the watch because the selection of 90 millimeter straps is very limited. And talking about a strap, I think the biggest failure of this watch is its straps. This strap is extremely stiff and hard and extremely uncomfortable to wear on the wrist. I'm not being exaggerating, but the strap on the watch, the strap on the $40 watch from Walmart is more comfortable than this. So if you are going to get this watch, be sure to swap out the strap at the very first moment. Another strap you can find online or in store will be more comfortable than this one. In the end, let's talk about its price again. The sticker price of this watch is 695 US dollars and yearly it is being sold at around 570 dollars at Juma shop and other green markets. But right now this one is on sale at Juma shop at 289 dollars. So if you need a dress watch but don't feel like dropping a lot of money, I think this would be a great choice. And I think that'll be all for today. I'm Jeremy from Our Second Is Gaming. I'll see you next time.